What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays, where we come together to help you make your story matter and make your author dreams come true. If you clicked on this video, chances are you have written a book, which is awesome. Seriously, that's a huge accomplishment and you should be super proud of yourself. But you're also probably thinking, what do I do with it now? Chances are your first draft is a hot mess and that's okay. First drafts are not perfect. They're not supposed to be perfect, but the potential for greatness is there. And that's why in today's video, I'm going to share with you my revision process, how I take a messy first draft, new or old, and revise it and turn it into a beautiful manuscript that I can feel confident sharing with the world. So if you have a first draft that has potential, but you're not sure where to start, this video is for you. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. So my process is basically broken down into five stages. Revisions, line edits, feedback, professional edits, and proofreading. Before we get into all of this, I first wanna talk about the importance of what I like to call decompression time. And basically that is the time between when you finish the first draft to when you start editing. I know that you're excited to edit your first draft and turn it into something beautiful, but you can't jump into revisions right away, like as soon as you finish writing the first draft, because you're too close to it. You've been so closely acquainted with this manuscript that you are not going to be able to look at it objectively. Now, technically it's impossible to look at your own writing 100% objectively because you wrote it. You'll never see it exactly how a complete stranger will see it, but you can almost create that strangeness effect, that unfamiliarity by distancing yourself from your first draft. So set it aside for a while, okay? When you finish writing, set it aside. I usually set aside my first drafts for about three to four months at least before I plunge into revisions. Just to give myself a better, clearer, more objective look at my own writing. Once that decompression time has passed and I feel a little less familiar with what I wrote, I can jump into the first stage of things, which is revising the first draft. Okay, first things first, you cannot start revisions without a strategy. Okay, you need a plan. It's kind of like fixing up an old house, okay, and remodeling it and making it look beautiful. You can't just start hacking at it with an ax and see what happens. You have to have a plan, an idea of what you want the finished product to look like in order to get you to that finished product. If you didn't make notes to yourself during the writing process of the story, don't worry. You can start making notes now. You can start planning the outcome, the perfect ideal finished product now, even if you've already written the first draft. So I like to start this process by asking myself a few important questions about my story. What do I love about this story? Why does this story matter to me? What are the problem areas I know I'm going to encounter? What are the strong points of this story? How do I want my characters to change throughout the story? After I finish answering these questions, writing down the answers, whether I write it in a notebook or in a Word document, I like to have it on hand close to me when I am going through the revision process so that I can reference what are the weak points, what are the strong points, and remind myself of my ultimate vision for this book. So I like to print out my manuscripts and bind them in three ring binders just to save myself from the eye strain of staring at a screen because I spend so much time staring at a screen for work that I like to print off my manuscript and hold it in my hands. Also, there's something about seeing your manuscript on paper that makes it seem so much more pliable and able to be changed and reworked. Sometimes I'll write out a whole new scene on notebook paper and stick it in my binder between chapters or add an existing scene by writing on the back of the page. And this space just gives me so much more creative freedom to 
open my mind to new possibilities with this story and add things and cut things and expand scenes or add a new scene that wasn't there before. There's something that's much more freeing about having it on paper, being able to scrawl all over it and throw in notebook pages of new ideas that you just don't have that freedom inside a Word document or inside Scrivener even. So the revision stage of things is where I make my major adjustments to the plot and my character arcs. I basically just have to do this with older manuscripts though because over the years I've really improved my outlining process and at this point I outline so strategically that I don't ever really need to do major rewrites to the first draft because I've already solved those issues in the outlining process. So if you want to avoid having to write an entire new draft, a whole new manuscript, I highly recommend checking out some of my videos on outlining. Even if you don't outline as intensely as I do, a little bit of outlining goes a long way and it can save you so much time. It can save you from having to write a whole new book, basically because you solve those problems beforehand. I know it sounds more tedious to have to figure these things out beforehand, but it's far more tedious, in my opinion, to have to write a whole new manuscript. But regardless of whether you're a plotter or a pantser or something in between, you should still have a strategic revision process and ask yourself these questions. Always try to make your writing stronger, try to make your story stronger. Ask yourself, how can I make this more emotional, more engaging for my readers? Look for plot holes. Look for ways to raise the stakes for your characters. Take your time with this and even test out ideas on trusted beta readers or critique partners. Now, once I have finished my revision process and have implemented all the changes I'm going to make into the story, it is time to move on to line editing. This is probably the least enjoyable part of the editing process, the part where you have to go through your manuscript with a fine tooth comb and look for all the little things, the stuff like passive voice and excessive adverbs, weak words, continuity errors, spelling and grammar. These are all things that I don't pay attention to necessarily in the revision process because I can't focus on everything all at once. That's why I much prefer this first pass, second pass method of editing. Because if I'm distracted trying to make a sentence sound better, I might not notice that the whole scene doesn't work. <laughs> Doing line edits when you're in the middle of the revision process is kind of like decorating the house before the sheetrock even goes up. Okay, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> so big stuff first, details second. If you want a more in-depth look at my line editing process and all the things I look for when I'm line editing, check out this video right here. I also made a video on the 10 weak words that you should cut from your manuscript and what to replace them with. And I will link that video up in the corner as well. So after I've revised and cleaned up my manuscript as much as I possibly can, it is time to get feedback. You thought our books were all cleaned up and ready to publish? No, no, not quite yet. First, we have to get objective opinions from trusted friends and beta readers and see if we can make this story even better. You've probably noticed by this point, that's the common theme here. What can we do to make this story better, more emotional, more engaging, more memorable? If you keep asking yourself those questions, you will get answers. So find those few people in your life that you respect their opinion and get their feedback on your story. They don't even need to be writers, okay? They just need to understand your vision with this story and they need to be perfectly, brutally, honest with you. Bonus points if they're the kind of person who would read this book. If you want more tips on how to find your ideal beta readers and what to ask them, check out this video right here. Me and my betas do our best, but I also need to get professional help. When it comes to editing, there's really only so much you can do yourself. And there comes a time when you need a professional's eye to make sure that your book reads as smoothly as possible. 
So I highly recommend finding a professional editor to work with, someone who understands your vision and your voice and can help you to bring your book to a whole new level of greatness. I also recommend working with a professional proofreader because again, you can only see so much and you find what you're looking for. So your editor will miss some things and that's why you need a proofreader. Even your proofreader will miss some things because they're human and that's why I recommend proofreading your book yourself at least twice before publishing. But that's basically it. That's basically my entire process from messy first draft to polished finished product. Comment below right now and tell me what does your process look like? I would love to hear all about it. If you are published, how did you go about doing that? And if you're not published, how do you plan to get your work out there? I'd love to have you join the discussion in the comments below and I hope you got some value out of listening to my process. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Also be sure to check out my Patreon because that's where we go beyond videos and take storytelling to the next level. The Patreon community is not only the best way to support what I'm doing here on YouTube, but it's also the only way to get access to my monthly live trainings where I go in depth and we explore different aspects of writing and publishing and so much more. So go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons and check out all the awesome exclusive content I have over there for you. Until next week, my friend, rock on. And I think that's where a lot of writers, especially new writers, make the mistake of focusing too much on the plot and not enough on the characters. And they think, oh, okay, I have to make something exciting happen. Right. But it doesn't really matter because nobody will care about it if they don't care about the characters. Right, because I think a lot of people, too, with certain genres, don't they say like...